Hello and welcome to the second video on this Peak and Pi. In this video we're going to look at how we connect the Peak and Pi to a system and how we start playing music. So the first thing I'm going to point out is if you look at the connections on the side of this Peak and Pi, all you actually get from the Raspberry Pi is the network connection and the USB. So I actually asked the question, do you run this headless? And the answer is yes, you do not need a keyboard a mouse or a screen connected to this device. All you do is connect it to your network via a network cable and then you can access the device via another device which may be your phone or a tablet or a PC. The only condition is those other devices must also be connected to the same network. Okay so I have connected this to my system. You'll see I have a network wide network to my uh, router. I've got the um, amplifier connections uh, which are via these adapters. I've got the power here which is a 9 volt supply. Uh, I've also added a USB stick there as well. And when you turn this on, uh, I think you can just about see, you can actually see there's a red light. That's one of the Raspberry Pi red lights under there. So you should be able to see that and you should also be able to see uh, network activity as well. So once that's connected and turned on, that is it. But how do you control it? Well, it's easy. You just get a uh, another device and log into it. Okay, to actually play music on the Beacon Pi, you actually need to get another device. And in this case, I'm using my PC so I can use the screen recorder. You want to open a browser and in the address put volumio.local. I believe that is how it is pronounced. Once you put that in, you'll get this lovely interface unit here. And you can then go to whatever albums or artists, whatever you select, and then choose whatever you want to listen to. And in my case, I was doing Jaya Straits and just put whatever you want on. As soon as you click that it will start playing. Obviously this one starts very nice and quiet and builds up. It's got a nice track to uh, hear all the different uh, detail. I've been playing with this uh, DAC all day and I think it's really nice high quality sound. Now obviously you can't let it play too long because YouTube will pick it up. Okay, we're going to pause that there. But either way, you can see what I mean. It's very easy um, to select your album. Obviously, these albums I've got on here are all on that USB stick. Now, you could stream music uh, via a media server. Um, you can also do web radio, which uh, I've been playing with as well, and that's quite nice as well. In fact, there are so many, you just don't know which ones to pick. Okay, so I've been using this for a good few weeks now and uh, I really am very impressed with the quality of music. What I find really good is it's really clear and precise. The definition seems to be really good. So that brings me to a little problem, or the first of two problems. And the first one is my ears, because I don't think my ears have done me any favours. Um, I've worked in an engineering environment for the last 30 years, so they've probably suffered a bit. Also, the hi-fi equipment I've got is also a bit dated. I think this product is aimed at somebody with a very good quality hi-fi equipment who's trying to get the best quality audio out of streamed music and it does it exceptionally well. Now one thing I also want to point out that this device is um, basically created uh, by Leo at Orchard Audio and this guy has been really helpful um, any problems, any questions I've had, he's come straight back to me with the answers. And that support is really good when you're looking at a high-end device like this. Now I'm not going to say the price of this item, uh, I'll leave the links down below and please click on the links if you want to find out more detail. But I will say if you're looking for a high quality DAC for streaming music, then this might be the advice for you. So thank you for watching and please subscribe.